I made a video on the worst characters in ABA. Let's talk about the best. Like last video, I'll be going to reveal and explain the best character in each roster. And at the end, we'll find out who's the best character in ABA as a whole. Starting off with the One Piece roster, there are actually a lot of strong characters. For the most part, the majority of the roster has tons of damage output in their own ways. Tia Sanji and PTS Zoro are both good examples on why the One Piece roster can be good. Tia Sanji has two guard breaks and two combo extenders, allowing him to perform easy touch of deaths. If not, I'll put a lot of damage that is hard to fight against since his moves are also super punishing in neutral. PTS Zoro is also super punishing in neutral. Every single space around Zoro is a danger zone because of the quickness and almost unpunishable guard breaks. Along with good neutral, Zoro's punish game is huge because of the combo extend and the finishing slice. However, despite these two characters being very good, these are just the runner-ups of the One Piece roster. Arlong is without a doubt the best One Piece character, providing you with three combo extenders, two with armor, and one that guard breaks on the first hit. I would say that only having combo extenders doesn't make a character good. However, Arlong also has the spinning Beyblade move that is easy to get around block with, and it also guard breaks at the end. Arlong has the neutral game of PTS Oro with crazy guard breaks and armor, while having the DPS and punish game of TS Sanji. Looking at Arlong's ultimate, it's very hard to fight against. Big moves that combo start, unblockable, guard break, and even a time stop. If an Arlong pops ult against you, Good luck. The Dragon Ball Z roster is also a very strong roster, only containing maybe a few characters that struggle in today's meta. These characters are strong because of the neutral game they have along with the strong punish game. If a character playing neutral often gets low rewards, not very often, then the character is probably bad. However, with Frieza and Vegito, neutral game is very easy. For Vegito, his spirit sword is on such a low cooldown, it makes him a threat from anywhere on the field. And when he does land it, he has four combo extenders which allow him to almost always kill if he lands any M1 or Spirit Sword in neutral. Although only having two guard breaks, both have armor, and both are very large, while one combo starts. His projectile is also very strong just because of the extend with the large amounts of damage. Frieza has the same pressure Vegito has, but with projectiles. Death Saucer is a very large guard break that is hard to deal with close range, and it comes back when missed. However, when missed, it doesn't guard break, but that doesn't stop the Frieza from using the very fast finger laser to punish you, trying not to get punished. Frieza also has tons of combos, and overall, it is very hard to fight against. The last character I will mention is Majin Vegeta. This character also has a very easy time opening the opponent up. The dash barrage guard breaks on the first hit and combo extend if it does. If it doesn't, the opponent is forced to take free damage without being able to do much. The onions don't do damage themselves, but because of the slow travel time and the threat of starting a combo, Majin players are able to stack this move with the dash barrage, winning neutral. Speaking of winning neutral, the grab goes through block, which is all right, but along with the other free damage you'll get with Majin, it stacks up, allowing Majin to get free ultimate charge without risking much. Between these three, I would personally say that the best character in the Dragon Ball roster is between Vegito and Majin Vegeta. Both are extremely strong, and I'm happy with both answers, so I'll just say both. However, if I had to pick one, Majin's ult is overall better, I would say, because of the surplus of free moves that you can land. Also, if you do land an M1 or a combo start on Majin when he's in ultimate, it's not as easy as one comboing him because he can use final explosion in stun, ultimately punishing you or punishing him. Compared to the Dragon Ball roster, I would have to say that the Naruto roster has way less viable characters. Despite that, these three characters are on par with the previously three characters listed. Madara has always been a strong character, and with the buff of Tornado being able to combo extend, he's less of a campy character and more of a super threatening at close range character that can camp if he wants to because he can do whatever he wants because he's good. His kit contains two combo extends, one being a guard breaking fireball that travels double the speed of Goku Black's powerball, Susano swings that aren't that good but is still lots of damage that happens after a down slam or when punishing whiffs in neutral. We don't really need to talk about the ultimate too much, guard break, big fire, wood, clones for pressure, and a big meteor. He's good. My guy is also very strong because of his snowball mechanic. Being able to constantly keep ulting and gaining different moves and stat buffs is what makes a Mike guy super strong in the correct hands compared to other characters. My guy also has an evasive, which is not combo start in stun anymore, but it's still an evasive, which is kind of rare in ABA. His neutral game is also very punishing because of the fact that he can ult a lot of times. When Mike guy gets to the final three or so gates, it's basically game because of how good the moves are, such as Asaku Jaku, Hidora, or Elephant Evening, and of course, Mike guy. Finally, Kisame is super strong. Okay, this is my third time recording this because I didn't have my mic on, but I don't think Kisame is actually that good. While recording, I found out that he kind of sucks, and I think it's actually Itachi.
Orochi for the reasons that you could do Demonic Illusion into Fireball, forcing them to block, then immediately guard breaking them, uh, Shuriken being a combo extend, and Crow Genshutsu allowing you to engage without getting punished at all. And for the ultimate, in ultimate we have Amaterasu, which allows you to, uh, it goes through block, and then you could use Totsuka Blade after to get tons and tons of damage. Yadamir allows you to engage very safely, and it's a long-lasting iframe, you can just M1, very very powerful. Amaterasu also has a really big range, so that allowing you to just run away and spam it, uh, well, without being punished, and then Tsukuyomi basically guarantees a kill on one person, which is really really good. And that's why I think Itachi is the best, because he has also great combo uh, potential, being uh, Fireball supposed to extend there, but it just didn't. Uh, being three combo extenders, being Shuriken, Firebolt, and Demonic Illusion. Uh, that's about it. Out of the three top contending characters in the Bleach roster, every single one of them received a huge buff that puts them in the meta. Ulkiora is a crazy character now because of Slice. Slice was buffed very recently, allowing it to combo, extend, and start. The reason why this is so strong is because Slice almost has no windup, making it so that if you don't want to be hit by it, you almost need to predict it. Speaking of predicting things, his predict is an evasive, which again, very rare, but good. While it is a combo extend, projectile that is super fast and can catch at least a few people off guard and the finger zero is also good because of those reasons stark is very good because of the two combo extenders he has that both have armor and one guard breaking stark also has an evasive but a special one if you use zero while flash stepping basically an evasive that does damage and punishes those who punish you the change stark got was zero metrioletta doing more damage how much more i don't know but his ultimate is already super hard to fight against because of the dogs that guard break and right gun being almost un playable to fight against. Lastly, we have Rukia, who recently got an entire rework. A lot of people will say old Rukia is better, however, they are just god beyond stupid. Rukia's base is super strong because of the two combo extenders that go through block, the stronger one being her first move. Did you double jump? Iced. Did you block? Frozen. Did you try an M1 Rukia? You're on thin ice. Rukia also has three combo extenders in total. White Ripple, Shokoho, and White Moon, making her super threatening when she wins neutral, which is a lot because of the moves that go through block. She also has an evasive, which is crazy because a Rukia theoretically has nothing to lose when playing in neutral, but everything to gain because of her kit and combo extends. Between the three, I do think the new Rukia rework is strong, putting her tied with Okiora for the best. Yes, despite the rework, Okiora is insanely powerful up close and has tons of tools to win neutral or combos. If I had to pick, I would side with Rukia because she's got nice feet. The My Hero characters are decent at best, unfortunately. Not the best damage, not the best neutral, not the best combos. However, two of these characters don't follow those stereotypes. Deku and Lemillion are the two My Hero characters that are actually pretty good. Deku has three combo extends and two really hard to deal with guard breaks. Delaware is crazy fast and is basically a win neutral butt. Leap is also not just a combo extender, but helps Deku rush down the opponent, placing himself in their face, which again is where Deku does the best thanks to Delaware and his combo starters. Lemillion has less combos. In fact, he only has one combo extender. However, Lemillion's permeation is crazy powerful because one, it's an evasive, and two, you can use Skull Crusher after a long period of time so that both of you and your opponent have no idea if you're permeated for the 50-50. Dive is free damage most of the time, basically allowing Lemillion to win most of exchanges, and when he doesn't, he never gets punished himself. One gimmick Lemillion has is that when he goes for a permeated Skull Crusher, even if the opponent blocks it, he's still unable to be hit, again, further stabilizing his neutral game. Between the two, I think they're strong in their own ways. Lemillion has great neutral and decent combos, but Deku has great neutral and great combos, so I'll give it to Deku. Before we start the JoJo section, the best is a stand user. It's not Jonathan, it's not Young or Old Joseph. Are we clear? No? I don't care. Dio is without a doubt the best JoJo character right now, although being broken at the moment. The thing about Dio is that Dio players can choose to only play around time skip, and unfortunately, there's not much you can do about that. Dio has good DPS because of knives extending and the barrage doing a lot. You might say that compared to other JoJo characters, Dio doesn't have a one shot. To that, I would say you're not wrong. But with all the poke damage you're going to be taking from time skip being a frame one guard break and blood suck going through block, you're probably going to die the one time Dio does manage to land the M1. If you were to be grabbed by Dio when he does have time skip, it becomes a 50 50. Choose to block, you might get block broken by time skip. Try to predict a time skip, you might just get M1. Plus, Dio's ultimate almost stomps the other JoJo's because of Road Roller being big and the fact that you can time stop multiple times. Second place is Dopio because of the recent Epitoth buff allowing him to one-shot combo people that actually hit it, and his ultimate also being really good and almost impossible to deal with. Guys, I was wrong. Killua is not the worst character. Uh, Killua is actually very good, and out of the 100 characters, 
he's the best. Hey, hey, hey. A man admits when he's wrong, okay? It takes a lot to say that you're wrong. Give me a break. But yes, Killua has three combo extenders and crazy neutral because of his skateboard stunning for too long. Clones basically make it impossible to punish you and a really good barrage combo extender, allowing for Killua to constantly pressure you while being able to do lots of damage because of his long combos. Yeah, that's about it. I'm gonna keep it real, I don't have Mob, but I know he's probably one of the strongest characters in Miscellaneous, if not the strongest. His ability to completely control the match without even m wanting is a lot more controlled than most characters in the game. He's a really hard to dodge range guard break that can maybe combo extend, repel which repels allowing him to play the range game, and slap barrage for when Mob does m one Mob really shines when he pops the ultimate, a better version of his base kit, and his final transformation, well, you can't really fight it. If I had to say another character other than Mob, I would say Gojo. Gojo is still really strong, but the strongest part about him is Infinity, a combo starting counter that doesn't go on cooldown if landed. The potential Gojo players have with Infinity is amazing because of the sheer threat that forces them not to throw out moves randomly. Plus, Gojo's ult and domain expansion is probably one of the strongest ult because of blue block breaking, backhand teleporting, and block breaking, and hollow purple almost insta killing. Between the three Demon Slayers, Rengoku is just the best because the insanely hard to work around guard breaks he possesses. Rengoku has the dash that guard breaks, combo starts, and extends. He has the flaming tiger, a huge hitbox which is basically unavoidable at close range, a multi-cut barrage which is fine, but a good move to mash and a combo ender, and the rising flame combo extend that extends twice, giving Rengoku a total of three combo extenders and two guard breaks. Rengoku also possesses the strongest ult between the three demon slayers, having huge AoE unavoidable moves, while also having the option to insta-kill someone giving him versatility within the match. The Fate roster was very hard to decide the best character for the same reasons in the last video. All the Fate characters are very strong, which means we have to look at the potential each character has. Between all of them, Gilgamesh is still super strong, having access to zoning while also being able to do a one-shot combo along with having a counter that combo starts. The guard break he has is also very large and combo starts, which means a Gilgamesh player has the ability to simply only engage when he has it up, threatening not only the counter but a hyper armor combo start. Other than Iskantar, I would say that his ult is also the hardest to fight against because of the grab that goes through block and combo starts. Enema Elish's hitbox is actually bigger than what you'd expect and against characters without movements or iframes, it's basically wraps. I was wrong twice, okay? Grey is good, but you can't blame me for calling one of the three characters bad. Okay, you can blame me a little. Grey is good because of the hard to fight neutral. Hammer is almost inescapable, same thing with the ice spike. It's clear that Grey's game plan isn't to do combos, but it is to hold lots of space by stacking the Ice Lance with other moves. Plus, Grey has two combo extends being the Hammer and Ice Lance, which gives him the ability to choose between playing passive or aggressive. Grey's ultimate is also very hard to fight for the same reason as the base, he can rush you down or play passive, both working very very well. Between Poo Poo, Asuna, and mid sign on, the easy option becomes Kirito for many reasons. 1. Don't jump, Kirito will track you out the air and if he's mashing one, he will combo start. 2. Good guard breaks, very big. 3. Good neutral because of the rage spike having no animation and the previous tracking move. 4. Lots of combo extenders, up to 3, which is enough to kill you most of the time. And 5. Crazy ult, cannot do anything about blue rose, and when you get hit by it, you explode. With that being said, we have covered every single roster in ABA, and now it's time to decide who is the best. Our finalists consist of Arlong, Majin Vegeta, Itachi, Rukia, Deku, Dio, Killua, Gojo, Rengoku, Gilgamesh, Gray and Kirito. And the winner is...